Hello, this is Tom, VA3WBA. Today I would like to talk about JPL antennas and show you how to make a simple JPL antenna for 70 centimeters amateur band. The internet offers a plethora of resources dedicated to JPL antennas. There are countless YouTube videos, write ups, and blogs. I want to make my video slightly different. After watching this video, I don't want you to just build a, yet another j antenna and do it sort of in a mindless manner. Like there are many YouTube videos where people say, do this, do this, here, here are the dimensions and boom, you're going to be good to go. I want you to spend a little bit of time and I want you to try to understand how these antennas are designed and what are the principles of making them. So here in this picture, we can see a JPL antenna and you, and you can tell that you have essentially two components. You have halfway um, antenna and you have quarter wave uh, matching section. So if we look at the half wave antenna this is this resembles dipole uh, we can see that if we fed this antenna right in the middle we can see the purple color is a current distribution so in the middle where we would feed the antenna and have our 50 ohm uh, we have high current and then this current sort of disappears and the high voltage grows at the ends of the of the halfway section. So this is why we do not touch the antenna. They, they tell us, you know, do not touch the ends of the antenna because there, this is where the high voltage occurs. Uh, then we have a quarter wave matching section and we know because we all took our exams that this matching section, that quarter wave pretty much uh, presents itself as a high impedance. So we have a high impedance at the open end. And this is, this is where, you know, possibly the impedance would be in ideal um, conditions infinite. And then we have shortened end and the shortened end, we know that it's going to be zero because it's a short. Uh, and somewhere here between the, the infinity and zero is our 50 ohms, which we have to which we have to find on our own, soldering this or using some sort of clips, alligator clips to, to find out where the ideal feed point would be, where we would match that section to, to 50 ohms. So we, can, we have two sections. So the quarter wave uh, section presents itself as a high impedance at its open end. And then we have half wave section, which also uh, present itself as a high impedance at uh, at its end. This you can you can think about it as uh, end fed half wave antenna. Normally, people you know have a toroid with several windings, and they do one to forty nine transformer, and they feed that half wave um, antenna. We're doing this it, it differently. Instead of you know winding uh, a, a coil a transformer. We we using we using quarter wave as a matching section to match high impedance of uh, this section to the high impedance of half wave section. If you're serious about building a JPL antenna or you want to learn more about these antennas, I strongly recommend Ed Fong's website. He makes these antennas. He sells them. Also, there are uh, YouTube videos, and in these videos, he talks about the design of uh, j antennas. He gives you little hints about what's important, and he speaks about challenges uh, he came across when it came to, to putting those antennas together uh, in a manner that he could um, confidently sell them to the public. So I strongly recommend this guy. This is the j antenna. I talked about like i said it is made from the single piece of wire bent at the end the width here is dictated by the pliers i had so essentially i grabbed wire with pliers and i bent both ends the entire antenna is about shy of 50 centimeters and i'm gonna give you 
exact uh, dimensions uh, later. The BNC plugged is soldered right to the right to the wire. Um, I could probably uh, change this and put some sort of choke and make it more finesse, but that wasn't the uh, objective. The objective was to make it as quickly and uh, as easily as possible. As you can see, uh, I put a lot of solder here because I wanted to see what's going to happen when I move this socket, how the impedance is going to change. Also, for the tuning, if you cut your antenna too much, it's not the end of the world. You can build up the missing piece of steel with, uh, with solder. And I did it at both ends. I was experimenting and I, I cut too much. And I had to put a couple, uh, couple drops of uh, solder to extend the antenna. This antenna is tuned at the very uh, low end of the band. It's uh, 432 plus, I think. Um, if I, if you shorten it, it's gonna it's gonna go up in the in the frequency. Um, essentially, tuning it, it's very finicky because you shave up one millimeter, and one millimeter is a lot. So let's go back to the dimensions and uh, other things that may interest you. In this picture, I'm showing you uh, the dimensions that I used to build my own antenna. The one that I made is for 432 megahertz. So the entire length of the, uh, of the wave would be 69.4 centimeters. However, um, the halfway section, it's about 34 centimeters. And the quarter wave section is slightly longer than 17 centimeters. Uh, to compare this thing to the frequency used as a calling frequency, which is 446, um, the entire length would be 67 centimeters. So we are looking at like, you know, three centimeters difference. And then the halfway section would be about 33 centimeters. And then the matching section would be 16.8 centimeters. Uh, I didn't talk about the feed point and how to find feed point. Um, I mentioned that at the bottom of the antenna, the impedance will be zero because this end is short. The open end is high. And somewhere in between the, the high impedance, or let's call it the infinite impedance, and the impedance equals zero, uh, we have 50 ohms. And we have to find it uh, by experimentation. There is really no easy way to tell. I've noticed that for VHF, UHF, um, the distance B from the bottom to where the feed point would be is about 1.2. So you take the... You take the gap here, so it's a one centimeters. You multiply it by 1.2, and it's going to be 1.2 centimeters. If it's one inch, it's going to be one inch by 1.2, and you're gonna you're gonna have a distance uh, where you're gonna um, install the the feed point. The feed point can be actually um, BNC connector, or you can use wire and run it to some sort of coil. A choke, I mean, and then you can install a appropriate socket of your of your choice, whatever it is. I tried both; both do work. Actually, the version with the choke, uh, I would say, works better. And for choke, I used for two meters, I used like four turns of uh, of the wire on a former, which was like maybe one point five two centimeters. It, it is not crazy important. Probably anything from two to four turns uh, will will suffice. We're talking about uh, UHF, VHF. You don't need to put like, you know, 30 turns to, to create a decent choke. So here is the choke I made for my 2 meters 70 centimeters J-pole antenna, which is made of the leather line. And then there is a section for 70 centimeters. There is a quarter wave section as a filter, as a cutoff, and then there is the rest of the antenna. So the, the choke, like I said, it's not critical. This is some, um, I think, uh, plumbing uh, pipe, a little bit of wire, 
four turns wrapped with the electrical tape and it does its job. Uh, going back to the materials you can use for the for the JPL. So I found uh, a piece of wire. It's about four millimeters thick, very, very rigid, uh, which was used to prop a yard sign. I don't know what the yard sign was, but the wire was by the road and I parked my car there and I go like, you know what? I'm going to take this wire and see what I can do. So it turned out when I straightened the wire, it was bent in two places. Uh, when I straight, straightened the wire, um, it had uh, slightly above two meters. So this is pretty much enough to make a J-pole antenna for two meter band. And that's gonna be something that I want to do over the next couple of weeks and perhaps uh, make another video about uh, J-pole for two meters. But uh, what I'm what I'm trying to say is, do not run to Home Depot or Castorama to 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 get materials. See what's around, because really, what you need is uh, is a little bit of scrap wire, uh, which you can turn into fantastic antenna, which is going to work there either on your balcony, front yard, or you may take for vacation. As you can see, the commercially available j antennas are not cheap. Uh, we're looking at $130 or, or even $180 uh, dollars to get an antenna for the band that you like. Um, so making your own antenna from the scrap wire makes perfect sense because it, it may actually be free or cost you just a couple dollars. Um, if you like this video and you found value, please like and subscribe. Uh, comments and subscriptions really motivate me to make more videos, either dedicated to ham radio, astronomy, or other topics um, that I'm interested in. Thank you very much for watching.